the Charles Morris building, I'd ride my bike to work every day and I'd go by it and every day I could see the progression of what was happening with the lot that it was on as well as where it was being moved to so it was a very first-hand experience with everything um, and I think that that is one of the really important things about our projects is just um, having that really deep connection to a site. And there was a little bit of mystery to things at the time for me because I wasn't really familiar with the history of the building at the time. It took me a couple months of research to sort of figure out really why this building was so important. The building was the office of Charles Morris, who was the first Surveyor General of Nova Scotia. We don't know exactly when the Charles Morris building was constructed. Um, we know it was built before 1781 because it's mentioned in Charles Morris' will. The Morris uh, building has been moved a couple of times. Uh, the first time was in 1895 when it was moved about 100 feet farther south uh, to a location a little farther south on Hollis Street uh, to make way for uh, what became the Victoria Hotel. And then on the longest night of the year, December 21st, it was moved uh, another 100 feet farther south to make way for a development that was uh, and has occurred on that site. It starts maybe with wandering down the street, seeing something, being curious about it, having a drive to want to find out more, and then... We sat down, we brainstormed ideas over drinks, um, drew in our sketchbooks, fleshed out a whole bunch of ideas. We were really interested in the idea that people had passed through here. And we also saw it, and I think this is maybe the most important part, but we saw it as a bit of uh, like a ray of hope, I guess, for some of the other properties in Halifax. I was really interested in documenting it as it stood in that state. Um, so that's where the idea of kind of creating a frittage or making a copy of the building kind of came into effect. It came from all over the place. Urban Cottage was a fun little store. John, the owner, is great help and I can go in and say that I'm looking for something specific and he'll put it on his radar because he goes to estate sales all the time. And you can only find X number of lamps that you really like and then you start painting them and it's like, oh, well that paint isn't going to work on that lamp, so now there's a couple less and then a couple less. So you have to aim really high, I guess. You, know, you work your way down to what is actually practical. The Morris Building is actually referred to as the Morris Office. It just made sense to use a desk and chair as this centerpiece that people would walk around. It's kind of a balance between having it a found object that someone could see in their home to removing it just slightly enough that they'll look at it and think twice. White is one element that helps in that. It can be a little bit challenging and it's physically really tiring, um, especially when you're out in the sun and the elements and the weather is really windy or whatever. Um, I'm more kind of loosey-goosey about things, just kind of, you know, rolling with the punches. I don't ever really expect perfection. I'm really into the, like, the whole process of things. But Eric provides this really different perspective and outlook because he's really interested in the technical aspects of things. It's also very much about like the action of printing the building. You can pick up the wood grain, you can pick up the wires that are, are dangling. Um, you know, even the smallest like little nail sticking out of a piece of wood can be picked up because they do document all of the imperfections. So logistically it was really just about sourcing all the materials, getting ladders, inks, rollers, friends, everybody kind of together to help, you know, make this project come to life. And um, it was much more challenging to print the the Charles Morris building, I would say. And it's, it can be kind of scary because you're up on these ladders reaching as high as you can to try to get some sort of detail out of the top molding. I can't be afraid of heights when I'm doing these projects. Even if I am, I just, it's my project. I have to, I have to just own up to it. 
the wind and the weather and the elements really add a whole other level of complexity to everything. That's something that we just didn't have when we were printing the Kelly building because it was more controlled and um, we were working in an interior space. It's about our roller touching the building for this half second and capturing that really small moment in time. By the time the scaffolding gets put up, I'm pretty tired. It's one of those moments in any project where you're just really doubting yourself and you're like, I don't even know if I like this project anymore, truthfully. Um, and, I, and I think by that point, you're kind of, you've worked so hard on it that you actually just think it's done, except you still have the whole project to install, you know? Um, so at that point, we're pretty tired and we still have a huge mountain of work ahead of us to do. My name is Carmen Sink, I work for Coastal Restoration. There was five or six of my buddies, plus myself, doing this project for them. It's interesting, because when they show up, it's like they're ready to work. They're, you know, you tell them what to do and they'll do it. So that's where I have to sort of rein in the creative side and they have to make things a reality. So it's about making these ideas that are rolling around in my head actually come and be something, be anything. It's so important at the beginning that it's laid out right and for, for my part of the project it was all about the floor plan you know we had this grid that we needed to work within and once you lay down that first track of where the scaffolding is going up it's going up so for me and for Charlie I think like that was very key and Coastal was great and they were so open and willing to let us give our input as to where this footprint should go. It was nice to not have regrets once it was up and it was perfect. It literally could not have happened without them. Without them, it would have been a pile of fabric, a three by three foot pile of fabric sopping wet. Well, Sarah and Charlie are very nice girls, very, very nice, and, uh, and they were on a deal line to have it done, and uh, it rained two days just constantly, pouring down, pouring rain. Sure, you're getting wet, but hey, it's got to be done. My part of the project can be really abstract and sort of more organic in terms of creation, but uh, it's about making that kind of more abstract process meet the harsh reality of measurements and numbers and um, that's where I get a little bit more panicked about things actually working out. I felt really relieved when the project was up. I could kind of relax a little bit. Phil was also really great because he'd, he'd come and check in on us when we were installing um, the piece and we always knew that we had his support and he came by just to make sure everything was going okay. 
and then he came by later um, when the exhibition was actually set up. What I like the most about these projects when they're done is that it takes a community to really do them and it's not an isolated experience so it really takes working with Kim and Phil and Sarah and getting our friends involved. It takes all of those people to make it happen. And they were so nice to us. We felt sorry. We would have said, well, heck with this, we're going home, scoring. I mean, we're not working out with this. I don't care who it is. But because they had to have this done for their schedule, you know what I mean? We said, the heck with it. We'll stay and finish it. And we did. And they were very appreciative. They sent a nice letter to the office regarding what we did. And the boys didn't mind working in the rain because the girls were good to us and we wanted to finish the project for them. So they didn't really care. They're, they're a pretty good bunch of guys and we worked like that a lot. Regardless if we're on a time schedule or not, we just want to get the job done, get it over with, it's done. Some of them can let go a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's just like, well, if the any top problems, gives out. What time you show? Six? Six. Is there any, any shoes or something hanging off a little bit? You can call around twice, what do you need? Okay, the wind picks up. I'm kind of, I'm kind of in trouble because the grommets are ripping through the fabric. And, um, the front, we'll take your picture. Yeah, so. I mean, I'm just worried about it falling down before 6 o'clock. But we got a good team, so it should be okay. Working with Carmen is wonderful. We weren't able to go back up the scaffolding, so it needed to be Carmen to come back and kind of save the day. And Carmen came back about maybe an hour and a half before the exhibition was starting to open and attached all the fabric. And that was time that he didn't have to spend with us. And he was being very generous and just wanted to see the project work out. The actual setup of the lamps, once everything was in place, happened very quickly and it was at the 11th hour because of the weather. We were given a floor plan of the interior space. It was more just a, a very subtle suggestion with lines painted on the ground inside the, the footprint of the house. So that's, I think, the first kind of glimmer of an idea that I had is that I want to try and create some kind of space so that when people are walking through, they can look over at the Morris building and see it and then be like, oh right, this is a sense of what it would be like if I was able to walk inside right now. I think it's a great idea to put something that's, you know, to scale to another house and then show the house right beside it. Like how they bring in, um, you know, historical things about Halifax that people wouldn't otherwise know, and I think that makes them stand out in the in the Nocturne thing that there's something educational to learn. That's really fascinating. I actually had a friend at the Public Gardens who recommended this site to me and said, like, if you get to anything tonight, you've got to go down to Morris Street, Morris Hollis, and 
and see the house and the, the carbon copy. Oh, this is just tremendous. This is, uh, this is, you got to think big to be able to do this kind of stuff. It's a real accomplishment and, uh, you know, it's something you can look up to and envelop yourself in and kind of feel like you're in a different time and place. Uh, it's, it's a pretty remarkable uh, creation. Well, how did somebody think of that? And then you realize, that, well, really, that's what art is. It's thinking beyond what we normally think about. You look at how much art has preserved things, you know, historical events and... <laughs> Uh, you know, in, in the days before electronic media, you know, that's the only way we have of knowing what Napoleon looked like or whatever. And because what makes things sustainable is that somebody loves it, somebody cares for it, and somebody respects it. They don't build houses like this anymore these days. It's just uh, clamboard on or that uh, tie back, stuff over uh, that old cheap plywood or whatever, laminate wood, and then they fire the side on behind that. Well, that's, that's not a good solid home, because once you get a leak, Behind the sign, the only thing that's protecting is that tie back. And as far as the uh, laminated plywood and stuff, or crushed board, or whatever you want to call it, water just goes through that like you put the soda cracker in water. So, <laughs> no, you don't make them like you still. We have a tremendous amount of building stock in Nova Scotia that could be could find reuse in our communities. When we got together in 2009 at Christmas and a, on a stormy day there and actually moved the building, that was against all odds. Nobody imagined that that could happen. And it's that kind of energy, that kind of passion, uh, commitment. It's really a lot about commitment and tenacity. It seemed like a bit of a turning point for the city to save this building and really sort of recognize the significance of keeping it around. I, I guess I hope that our project raised a little bit of awareness to what's happening with the building and it at least sparked the public's interest in, in what is going to happen. Establishing that relationship with the building and then creating an artwork about it, it gives me this forever bond. I'll always feel really connected to that particular site. You know, this building has been around for 250 years and this, my project takes up one evening of this whole history of this building. I think it maybe helps it to be more about the experience when you only have six hours with it. It tells a tale. It, all of those scratches and those imperfections on the side of the building. Um, I, think, I think maybe in a similar way to my project, you know, that might have been a bump. Somebody was moving a piece of furniture into the house and they nicked the wall. And that's one person doing one action. Similar to my project, which is just two people doing one action, working together on a project. But it's a very small moment in time, like it's just uh, I guess it just documents people's involvement and people's presence. When you're dead and gone, you still have this, as, as silly and as small as it might sound, you still have that action that you did and that lasts.